Hey everyone, Dr. Pedram Shojai here with Dr. Sarah Gottfried at the Health Bridge. Hey everybody, welcome back. Hey, it is good to be here, Sarah. We get so we're kind of doing this like on and off, hostful versus having a guest on, and we're really expanding kind of the types of guests that we're having and breaking into different verticals because we're just looking at people who are interesting and are interesting to us and what they mean to life, health, and, and kind of the bigger picture. So we hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, quick announcement: the facebookcom slash, uh, uh, the health bridge. <laughs> Here it is: facebookcom slash the health bridge just verifying is uh, our new Facebook page uh, we'd love for you guys to comment there we're posting shows there obviously wherever you're getting this keep getting it but if you guys have questions and comments and stuff for us that's where we're hanging out and uh, we've made it easier just because either you're going over to Sarah's pages and our pages uh, and you know people are getting a little confused about where to reach us so we've uh, streamlined it there on Facebook so I uh, hope that helps and we'd love to see you there, facebook.com slash the health bridge. How's it going, Sarah? Hey, you know, things are good. I like how you just were talking about the different verticals that we're bringing to the show. I would also say we got some new horizontals. Like <laughs> we just talked about Bo Eason. You could interpret that so many ways. <laughs> I know where your mind was going, Pedram. All the time. <laughs> All the time. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about your gong and how things are going because I was looking at your gong, Pedram, and I noticed a curious thing. You wrote in there, no ejaculation for 100 days. And I just feel like, uh, can we have a conversation about that? <laughs> you know what's funny is most people didn't notice that. And the people who did were like, bang, 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 what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> <laughs> Say more. Uh, yeah. Say more. Why would you do that? And so, yeah, it's been going phenomenally well. Um, you know, I found myself for the first time, uh, really ever, complaining about being tired. Um, and the insomnia from having had a baby was finally catching up because my life didn't slow down any. And um, that's not like me, right? And I kind of got to this place where I'm like, oh my God, you know, woe is me. And I stopped and said, monkey, you know what to do about this. You've done this before. Bring it back, right? Bring the monk back into the monkey. And so I, it's a practice um, of Tantra where you can still make love, you can still have sex, but you don't ejaculate, which kind of like you lose a lot of energy there. And so I've been doing my Qigong and retaining semen so that I can build up the base of my power. And I'll tell you, I mean, you know, went to bed late and got up early this morning and I've had a couple of those in a row because the baby's, you know, goes through cycles of being fussy and I feel fine. I feel great. People are like noticing and people are like, hey, you're, you're walking taller and you, you, you look different. What is it? And it's that, it's that mojo that I'm not losing. Interesting. Okay. So I, I understand this. Like I've studied Taoist sexuality. I've studied Tantra. And this is, this is a big adjustment for the Western mind. The idea of separating orgasm from ejaculation. I feel like that's one question here. And then the other piece as my husband was also looking at your gong and he was like, what the hell? Like, why would he want to not ejaculate? Cause he, you know, he enjoys ejaculation. So can you maybe talk a bit about separating orgasm and ejaculation and, and in addition to it, helping you kind of boost your mojo, like what are some of the other qualities to it that made you want to put it in your gong? Sure. Um, I also really enjoy ejaculation, and about <laughs> 45 seconds after ejaculation, I really enjoy deep sleep. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so that's part of the problem, right, is that the, the you know better than any, right, the, the rush of serotonin, the rush of neurochemicals that hit the male mind to say, okay, now stay there so that these boys can swim and, and, and you know, impregnate this, this female, just basically, like, knock you out like a tranquilizer dart. Right? So the essence of Tantra is understanding that the power of sexuality lies in the sensuality of the female energy and to allow for the man to not think, I mean, most guys find sexuality through watching porn or something like growing up and they don't like, they don't realize that that's not lovemaking. That's not sensuality. That's just kind of like, you know, animal aggressive sexuality in a lot of ways. And it's just like, you know, how creative can we get with positions? It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with lining up energy, 
heart to heart, breathing together and, and, and co-creating life. So there's this really powerful message in what that is that's been lost in our culture. And so we get leveraged by that. Um, all of advertising uses that as a judo flip to get us to respond in different ways and all that. And someone who actually taps into the sensuality of their sexuality understands that. And it's like, and look, my wife ain't complaining, right? It's it's the adoration of your partner and allowing for for her to express and allowing the energy to move up. And, and it's, it's a real powerful healing practice and sometimes it's just too much energy and it's it's and you have to meditate it off but it's a big part and so the Taoists taught this and again I'm a Taoist priest I mean this is something that is part of our lexicon is learning how to use that the sexual energy which is really the the drive that that you know is so powerful in our bodies and our psyches and understanding it and immortalizing it and turning it into consciousness instead of just like pump and dump, go to sleep, and that's it, right? And so it's, it's got tremendous benefits because it doesn't, there's this thing in Chinese medicine called Jing, which is your essence. And you don't want to squander your essence. It comes from your sexual power. And so if you could harness and refine your sexual power and turn it into qi and more importantly, shen or spirit illumination, then you start to wake up. Then you start to see who you are in the grand scheme of things and see what this transference of life energy really is and you can start to see it in everything and it doesn't have to do necessarily with sperm and egg making babies but you see that energy in everything. So I know that that's super esoteric but you know, you asked and that's, that's the world I come from. I'm a Taoist priest. This is what we do. We cultivate life force and you have to understand where life force comes from and if you squander it, you'll never get that lesson. Yeah, this is this is good stuff. And I, I wanna I wanna talk about some of these ideas because what I love about the gong is that it, it gets you to look at some of these habits that you, that have you know sort of accumulated in your life and to maybe turn them over, inspect them in a new way. And the what did you call it? The pump and dump? Like I, I when you've been married for a while, frankly, you know, sometimes there's some pump and dump happening. And I, I love the idea of how a gong can get you to look at that and say, you know, if I'm trying to connect to female essence, correct me if I'm wrong, but in, in the Taoist sexuality that I've studied, it starts with kissing. It starts with the tongue. It starts with, you know, kind of connecting to that nectar of the female essence when you kiss and when you've been married for a while, sometimes it's like a quick peck in the cheek, you know, quick kiss. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's not as much of this emphasis on the female essence. So I, I really like this idea of, you know, kind of turning it over and just understanding what it can look like to deepen your sexual experience. You know, what it can look like to um, have it become more mature and kind of fully expressed and not just as you were describing, you know, what sort of acrob acrobatics can we try next? Yeah, and you, you try to get more and more creative and get into role play and all kinds of things that people do to keep sex exciting. And when I hear that, it usually means that they've lost the charge, the buildup of that charge, right? Because like now it's like I watch my wife walk by and it's just like you could just feel the energy and she knows it she and it, and it arouses her because she knows that she's wanted she knows that there's this this energy it's like who doesn't want to feel like their man wants them right and and so it builds up that energy again and it creates this thing where you you, you can like really it's like the act of creation you don't have to make babies but you can make love right and that generates energy and it and it really brings you together so it's been a very powerful thing for for my marriage and it's been a very wonderful thing for for my health because you know daddy feels better because you fall into those trances, right? We're like, oh yeah, yeah, we should have sex. You know, do you need it? Okay, right? And, and, and so that's what married people do. And you, you know, you gotta step out. You have to pattern interrupt when you realize that, that things are going into that place of, of monotony. And rote and sexuality and sensuality shouldn't be in the same sentence. You have to create charge. And the best way to do that is this practice, which, you know, I, I didn't make it up. You know, I've just, I learned it uh, from my teachers and books and, you know, it works for me. 
Love it. Okay, well, I uh, I didn't put anything sexual on my gong. Maybe my next gong, I'll uh, I'll upgrade. But um, I really appreciate talking about it with you, Pedram, because I, I feel like this is one of those things we don't talk about. You know, there's such a conversation in Western medicine about low libido and, you know, what are the hormonal drivers of libido? 70% of low sex drive is hormonal. But I, I feel like when you have this broader, more nuanced conversation, when you get horizontal and vertical, it really helps. I mean, it's sex is not just biology. It's got the spiritual aspect. It's got the emotional pieces. It's got the psychology and the biology. Like it's a very complex piece of our lives that we want to pay attention to and also use it as a barometer. And I like how you put it in your gong so that it's also a, um, it's a lever. Mm. Mm. And you know, the essence of Tantra is actually taking the horizontal back to the vertical, right? So as you've built up that charge, then you actually embrace front to front and line up the chakras and just breathe together and you could feel the love for each other expanding. You could feel the energy moving and it becomes a really powerful, beautiful, spiritual thing that most people have never experienced in their lives because, you know, sex is evil or sex is judged or it's just to make babies and all the kind of like scripts that keep us small and keep us subdued. And you know, you know better than any, it's like once you start to activate the higher master glands, like the pineal gland and the hypothalamus and all these wonderful things that are just happen to be aligned where the Indians and the Taoists say the chakras have been for, you know, since time started. And once these things start lining up, you start to see the biology change. You start to see the physiology change. You start to see people become more sensual and, and, and really become more comfortable in their bodies. And so it's just, I mean, this kind of stemmed from us talking to Bo Eason and, and how he talked about how people are so repressed in their sexuality and they're, they're missing the nectar of life. I mean, this is, this is the good stuff, guys. So, you know, I mean, I, we could put on, you know, the, we'll put it on the Facebook page, um, again, facebook.com slash health, the health bridge. Um, basically, we'll put up some resources and books that we like, just so you guys can check it out and kind of dive deeper into the subject. But look, I've been doing this for a very long time and it works for me. And so, um, you know, Sarah called me out. So here we are sharing and this is, you know, this is, <laughs> private stuff, but you guys need to know about it. Like I realize that a lot of the private stuff that I do is what gives me vitality. And you know, it's the secret sauce that, that, that makes us shine. And so how do you guys not know about this? Like it's, it's selfish for me not to share. So you should. Yeah. Thank you for sharing it, Pedram. I love that. And it's, I, I really appreciate you know, that we have got a Facebook page now. I want people to be letting us know, you know, what are the shows you love? Let us know the ones you don't like. Like, we want to hear from you. And we also want to hear what you want more of. Like, do you want to take this deeper, talking about Tantra, talking about Taoist sexuality? We could go, you know, about another 10 layers in terms of uh, Taoist sexuality, Tantric sexuality. So let us know what you want. That's what we've got our Facebook page up for. And we're just, we're here to serve. Like we, we're happy to talk about whatever. Let, you know, direct us. Let us know what you most want to hear about. Love it. Love it. Look, guys, we're doing this as a service to you. Uh, selfishly, we love hanging out with each other. And to do it like in this for format has been really fun for us. It just evolved into this. It wasn't like, hey, let's have a radio show, right? But now it's a thing and we really enjoy it. I look forward to the days that we record and our guests are awesome. So Sarah, thanks. I, I hope you are enjoying your gong. There's days that are really rough. I mean, I got home late one night and still had to walk around the neighborhood while listening to a book on tape. And that's just, you know, a deal's a deal. But you know, it's the discipline that, that it builds and the self-love that we structure around it um, uh, are powerful things. And so I'm hoping you're enjoying yours. Totally loving it. Totally loving it. I'm having a, a happy gong day today. Awesome. Yeah, you look good. You look good. For those of you guys who are on video. So, all it right, might guys. have been Bo Eason too. Just yeah, saying. he lit you up. <laughs> yeah, he's good. If you guys haven't listened to that show, go back and listen. 
Um, all right, so facebook.com slash The Health Bridge. Find us there, like the page, let us know what you think. Uh, we will catch up with you next time. This has been Dr. Pedram Shojai and Dr. Sarah Gottfried, and uh, we'll see you on the next show. Bye, everybody.